So this video is special. If you guys have not seen this music video already, Flatbush Zombies, Afterlife, this is a really awesome visual, some amazing visual effects. They did a great job with this, and today we're gonna talk about it. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Max. Today, we're going to break down, give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating some visual effects inspired by the music video Afterlife, Flatbush Zombies. We're gonna be using a mixture of Adobe After Effects. We're also gonna be doing some 3D. I'll be using Cinema 4D personally. We're gonna teach you everything from creating custom invert looks, different ways to track in Adobe After Effects, a lot of different tips and tricks, as well as where to find these skeleton assets and how to composite them together with your footage. Then we're gonna hop into 3D software and we're gonna show you how you can create different X-ray shaders and materials and how you can track motion within Cinema 4D, which can help you a huge amount when it comes to crafting the 3D skeleton behind your characters. So let's start off by breaking down the music video and what we're gonna talk about. So they were able to pull off a complete x-ray vision effect. I'm gonna share some of my thoughts. Let's start breaking some of this stuff down. So number one, let's talk about the camera that they used to film this. I think that they used a thermal camera, a FLIR. If you guys ever play the video game Modern Warfare 2 whenever you're in the AC-130, that black and white negative style view. The reason why I think this is because you see a lot of these details as dark black and you see their hair as dark black. Now, whenever you're working with an invert effect, what it's doing is it's affecting the luminosity channel. It's flipping those and it's making it black black and white. So if I was to apply an invert effect onto my face, it's going to make my dark hair look white. What a thermal camera is doing is it's mapping the black and white to the heat coming from the subject, which is why things like your skin would be more white, things like your clothing would be more dark. Now the reason why I think this is a thermal camera, again, let's look at a comparison of an actual thermal infrared camera used in some nature documentaries here. You can see it's a very similar look. Again, you can replicate it with an invert, but it's not quite the same. And if you know what you're looking for specifically, you can see those different so if you want the exact same, you would need a thermal camera, which can get very expensive. They probably rented it out, but quality that you're seeing here, this is military grade equipment. So again, prices up from 90 to $200,000 for a camera like this. Going through here, I wanna also talk about some of these other things. I wanna talk about how we can use 3D software to kind of create the props in the scene, not just the skeletons in their bodies, but also a lot of the props that go throughout. So here's a bit more example of what I meant by some of those 3D renders to show the different props, like the inside of the PS4, the controllers. You can do something like that very easily using some different shaders within Cinema 4D. So we'll show you that later on. Now, the last thing that I wanna to say is if you want a very basic version of the skeleton looking x-ray style I'm gonna link below my Adobe Premiere tutorial that is very similar to this but I made about two to three years ago so it's a lot more beginner friendly um, it's easier but obviously it's not as advanced it's not gonna it's not gonna go as in-depth with the tracking with the look with the 3d that this tutorial is so this is a more advanced version of that I also want to say that some of the imagery in this is just beautiful some of the shots they're able to pull off the seamlessness with all of the 3d characters I'm gonna have it react with the flame here see how his face lights up all of the credits are in the description go ahead and follow them let's take a look at some of the behind the scenes which is on their website as you can see here's just some stills but now we can see a better look at how this was filmed. So what we can tell from here is they're placing a lot of these little reference track markers onto their face and their clothing. This is probably to help the 3D people in post use these track marks to map in that skeleton rig. So let's go ahead and start working on our invert look and putting together our skeleton. As you can tell by my footage here, I just put little dots on my hands because I wanted to track some of these skeleton hands onto me. I also put them on my face. Now, if you are only gonna use After Effects, you don't have to put any markers on your face. After Effects facial tracking system is pretty advanced, so you can get away with nothing on your face for just After Effects. But if you are going to be doing this in 3D, then you may want to consider putting these little dots wherever else you may think they'll be useful when it comes to the tracking. We're gonna go ahead and right click on this and replace it with an After Effects composition. You guys can also just start with an After Effects if you're not working with a dynamic link, but this is my preferred workflow. So we now have our footage within Adobe After Effects. Let's go ahead and start working on our own custom invert thermal camera look. I have a few options for what you want to do. You can go to your effects and presets and you can search for the normal channel invert here. Place that on your footage and you can change around the channel to get some different things. You can invert the color channels. You can invert your lightness, your saturation. So if you want a quick little drag and drop, you have that at your disposal. Another thing that you can do, you can look up a colorama effect under color correction. You can place that on your source footage 
open up your output cycle and you can change this little preset palette to negative. Now it's gonna look a little bit more like that thermal camera. In my opinion, again, it's mapped to luminosity. It's not mapped to heat, but it's looking a little bit more black and gray, that real film negative color style that we like. So if you wanna go more in depth with this, if you don't want just this look, you guys can experiment with blending modes, color grading, you can apply a glow effect. I did a lot of experimentation with this just to see how close to the thermal look I could get. As you can see here, what I did was is I duplicated the footage, I put the blending mode on difference, um, I also duplicated it again, put it on multiply. I've just been experimenting with different tint invert and glow effects and i'm not showing you the step by step for this because it's all going to be different depending on your source footage different lighting setups different colors but i just wanted to show you that if you do experiment a lot if you do use your curves effect to really change around things in your scene you can get a lot of different results so you don't have to just go with the base drag and drop a little invert on there you do have some options when it comes to this all right so we talked about getting the invert look that we wanted. Now what I'm gonna recommend is you click on your footage, you go to your effect controls, and you just turn all this off for now. Now we're gonna start adding the skeleton aspects of it. We're gonna composite it in, we're gonna mask it up, we're gonna track it, and then at the very end, we can bring our invert back over top of this and start tweaking with everything to get it the way that we want it. So we'll turn this effect off for now. And we're going to go ahead and find a place where we'd like to apply our skeleton. So let's start out with applying a skull over your face, as you can see. And we're going to track it in with our footage so that it follows our face. And then we'll talk about the hand. And at the very end, I'll show you just some little masking techniques we could do to get rid of these dots on your face and cover them up. So popping back into our unaltered footage here, let's go ahead and start tracking this. And again, I mentioned After Effects has a really great facial motion tracking system. Select your footage. Click Control D to duplicate it. I'm gonna rename this to Face Track. On this Face Track layer, I'm gonna go up to my masking tools on my toolbar. You'll see here's the rectangle tool. I'm gonna Alt click this until I see my ellipse tool. You can also click the, short cl the shortcut Q. And I'm just gonna draw a little circular mask over my face. Now what I can do is I can right click on that mask and I can click Track Mask. And it's gonna pop up this tracker window which is actually being covered right now by my face cam, but here you go. If any of this is getting covered up on your screen, you may just need to, um, you may need to just move around your panel so you can see this clear. Make sure that you're seeing all of these options here. And you're gonna change your method to face tracking detailed features. Start at the beginning of your timeline and click play. And again, you're gonna see how good After Effects facial tracking system really is taking all those details into account. It's creating all the tracking info, which we can use to link to anything that we'd like to composite over our face. All right, so we've done that. And the reason why we put this in its own layer is just to isolate it. Now we have our face masked out and we also have this face track points here. If we open that up, you can see all the tracking data for your eyes, for your nose, for your mouth, cheeks, chin, everything. So that's perfect. So to actually bring in the skeleton assets, the skeleton elements that we're going to composite with our footage here, you have two main options. Option number one is to find something from Google Images. If you just search for skull and if you go to your settings, your tools, you can search by usage rights to make sure you're using the correct Creative Commons license. You can also search by color and put it on transparent. That way you're only searching for PNG images, which are gonna be useful for when we bring it into Adobe After Effects because we won't have to remove the background. So you can find something like this, you can right click and you can save it, show in folder, and you can drag that right into Adobe After Effects. So that's if you wanna do it with a Google image. Now, the main disadvantage of doing it this way is if you're doing a lot of movement in the footage that you took, for example, I'm turning my head a little bit as I look at my hands, it's gonna be pretty hard to replicate that 3D movement tilting on different planes with a 2D image. So that's why I recommend you use the second technique, especially for the skull, which is doing it with a 3D plugin. Now the 3D plugin that I like to use for After Effects is Element 3D. I made a bunch of videos talking about this. Again, I'll link this all in the description, but we could find a free 3D skull model online to do this. So let's do the skull in 3D because I think the results will be better. And then we're gonna do the hands with just Google Image 2D. And I'll show you how to do it that way. So I'm gonna right click down here. I'm gonna go to new and I'm gonna create a new solid and I'm gonna name this solid 3D skull and I'm going to click OK. With the Element 3D plugin from Video Copilot, we can click on Effects and Presets and just search for Elements and drop that onto our solid. Now, what we can do is go up to our Effect Controls, 
click scene setup and it's going to open up this little 3d um, user interface here where we can bring in a skull 3d model now you may be asking where do i find a skull well you can always go to google free 3d skull model and, ha and here you go, you got free3d.com, CG Trader, uh, Turbo Squid. So let's try out Turbo Squid and see if we can find something. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it with a free one just like this. So go ahead and download this. If you're using Element 3D, you need to download. You need to make sure that this is either a Cinema 4D file or an OBJ. And most will come in OBJ format. So it's pretty easy to find something that will work. So back in After Effects, once you've downloaded that OBJ or C4D, you click Import, and you find wherever you save that. So here's my OBJ. I'm gonna click Use Auto Normals and click OK. And now our skull is in here. Let's click Normalize Size right here just to see this. And there we go. So we have our skull all ready to go. If you wanted to, you could maybe customize the texture of this, add a little bit more detail. So we have our skull, let's click OK. So let's go back up to our effect controls for our 3D skull layer. We're gonna open up group one here and I'm going to click create group null. So click create and it's gonna create this null layer here which I can right click and rename. I'm gonna name this to skull control. And this is just an easier way to move our skull around. If you open up your transform options here, you can orient this in 3D space. You can move it across the Z axis, um, which is really nice. And it's just easier to make adjustments and move this around than if you were to go in the world transform under elements and uh, mess with all these settings. Another useful thing is you can actually use this null to link to any tracking information, which is gonna be useful because we already created our tracking information with that facial track. So let's start setting that up and getting everything to work properly. All right, so to link the skull to our tracking information, it's actually pretty easy. All you need to do is go ahead and open up your skull control so you can see all of our transform options. Let's even just take the position of this and kind of place it over the face. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to open up the face track layer that we made earlier that contains all of the tracking info. And we're going to, let's say, track it to the middle of the nose. So we're gonna open up nose and we have nose bridge, nose tip. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down alt on my keyboard. While holding down alt, I'm gonna click on position. The number should turn red. You should see your expression editor here. I'm gonna grab this pick whip tool, which has now popped up. And I'm going to take and drag down until I find the nose bridge that we opened up and then release. So you'll see it creates this expression. You can just click away. And now you're gonna see that the skull is following the tracking information of my nose. So as my head is moving, it's going to move the skull. We have a general little track going on now. And what we need to do is just rescale this down and start positioning it, transforming it the way that we really want. If you want to move this without moving the position now that this is locked into place, you can use your anchor point here. So we can lower our anchor point, we can lower our scale to blend this in better and match this up better. Is I recommend you click, go down to the actual 3D skull layer, click T to bring up your opacity and just lower that a tiny bit. Now you can kind of see your facial features matched up with the skull. So now let's grab our skull control again and let's go ahead and just try and position it. If you want, you could even position it with just the 3D skull layer. Now the reason why I'm showing you how to do the skull in 3D and not with a 2D image from Google Images, since this is 3D, we have all of these options which allow us to orientate it, change perspective, and create these little animations that will match the shape of what our skull is doing. So I can kind of orient it to the side. I can go up to my skull control and I can keyframe all these options at my starting position. And as I move through here, if I make any little movements, like for example, if I tilt my head, I can go ahead and just use my orientation to just make those tiny little adjustments here so that it matches up as best as possible. So right here where I'm about to look to the right, I'm gonna go ahead and just click these little diamonds here. This is setting a keyframe for this position. So we're gonna start, start it at this position for the animation. And as I turn like this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my orientation and just kind of pivot it with my head. It may take a good amount of tweaking to be able to do this, um, but it's really not that difficult. As you can see, it's starting to match up a lot better, but it kind of looks like a skull that's pasted on my face and not really mixed in with my face. It doesn't look like it's x-ray. So what can we do to blend this a lot better so that it really looks like there, it really looks like you're seeing through me and not just seeing this mask placed over me. 
So the number one thing that I recommend you do is you mess with your blending modes and then we add a mask. So start with the blending modes. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my 3D skull layer and I'm gonna change the blending mode to something like screen. And you can experiment with this. Again, you may want to turn the you may want to turn your invert on, your colorama on, so you can see what this is gonna look like um, with so this, you can see what it's gonna look like with the blending mode, it's really up to you. So experiment with the blending mode, and now I'm gonna go ahead and mask, and the mask is what I think really blends it together best. So you can't just simply mask out an element 3D layer. As you see, it's kind of messed up and it's just not properly what we want it to be. So to get a proper mask on this, we're gonna just go ahead and right click in this gray space, we're gonna to go to new and we're gonna make a solid. And this is kind of, this is gonna be sort of our uh, mask layer where it's gonna be the reference for the correct mask that we want. Just name this skull mask, click okay. And make sure it's over top of your 3D skull layer. Now we're gonna turn off the visibility for this. So click the eye on your skull mask layer. And then what we're gonna do is with the visibility off, we can now draw the mask as if we were masking out the normal skull layer. So we'll draw a mask and you're not going to see anything happen to see things start to happen go to this track mat option here and change it to alpha mat on the skull mask and for this to work again it needs to be right above your 3d skull layer it can't be over here or it'll mess up the track mat now you can use this just as a normal mask layer you can click m to bring up your mask options we can pump that open and just bump up a little bit of feather and already it's just starting to blend a lot better with our face and that's the real magic behind compositing it together so you want this to look as realistic as possible i'm going to lower the mask expansion again you may need to do some tweaking you can also animate the mask path so as you see as we're moving around it's kind of just showing different parts so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this keyframe here, drag to the beginning, and I'm just gonna click on the actual mask, not the layer, so I can just click and drag this over. So now we have the mask just following the general area of where we want it to be. Let's bump up the feather a tiny bit more. We're gonna start to see our skull come together a lot better. Now, if you want, you guys could experiment with, again, you could color correct with the curves effect. You can kind of get some contrast in the shadows, however you'd like. Here's what I did to get this look. Um, I applied a brightness and contrast, just lowered it a tiny bit, a little bit of a glow, just base After Effects glow, added some noise. This is pretty important. If you add a tiny bit of noise, it kind of blends in a little bit more and just makes it look a little bit more realistic and not like it's just pasted over. So I just put no color noise, 6%. You can just search for that in your effects and presets. Uh, I placed an invert on here just to get that kind of contrasty shadows. And here's what my curves are looking like. I also applied a tiny bit of blur just to blend a little bit better. Those are the main steps that you're gonna want to take to create that skull over your face look. Pretty quick, pretty easy. If I wanted to, I could just repeat those steps for the ribs, for the throat, the spine, everything that you could possibly want. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it on the hands because that's where I placed my track markers and I did that for a very specific reason. So we can use Adobe After Effects motion tracking and we can use the puppet tool to lock the skeleton hands into place. So we're just gonna use a Google image for this no 3D software needed. You can use the same thing I was talking about with the transparency, with the license. Um, just look up skeleton hands like this. So you want to find a PNG. So once you find the hand that you want, so I ended up bringing this into Photoshop just to remove the background. I just dragged the Photoshop project file back into After Effects so that I can have my little skeleton hand here, PNG. So let's do a basic little lineup for this on my hand. Let's go ahead and rotate this. And this is the thumb. So we need to go like that scale that down a bit and here's our basic little lineup so there's a little trick which i'm going to show you that i use for this it's also a pretty useful trick for any other projects you're working on we're going to hide this layer for now and we're going to create some more tracking info on our hands using these track markers so to start this off you're just going to right click in your gray space go to new and you're going to create a null object and i'm going to rename this and i'm going to create a null for each of the fingers on my on my right hand here so i'm going to make this one called left pointer and then we can easily just control d to duplicate rename this left middle and control d rename left pinky 
And I probably should have put it on the thumb as well, but it's fine for now. We have the main basics, the basis of our movement. So we have our null objects here. These are going to be the placeholders for our motion tracking. So let's go to where our hands are up and we can see them clearly. I'm going to just control shift D and split this because we don't need this part. This is where our hands aren't even up. So right click on your main base footage and we're going to go to track and stabilize and we're going to go to track motion. This is going to bring up a track point and it's going to, as you see, bring up our tracker window. So step number one, we're going to take this track point, just click in the middle and we're going to place it on the dots. So this one is pointer finger. We're going to go ahead and just place it right on our pointer finger dot. And we're going to go over to our tracker window, click edit target, set it to left pointer and click OK. Now, all you need to do at this point is just click play. Make sure you're at your starting position here. Click play. You're going to see the track point is going to lock on to that. You see as we flip it, it gets lost. So we'll just stop it right there. So now that we have that tracker set up, just click apply and just go ahead and click OK. And now you're going to see you have this little red box. This is our null. This little red box is going to be over top of our left pointer finger, just like that. And it's following with the motion. And we're going to repeat those steps for each of our fingers. So pretty simple. You just select again, right click, track and stabilize, track the motion, place it on the next finger, edit the target, put it to left middle, and you click play. Once you've done that, again, you click apply. There you go. Now we have our next little null over top of our middle finger and keep repeating those steps. All right, so I have a null object for each of my fingers. As you see, they're all on my knuckles here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to map the skeleton to our tracking info. So to do that, we're gonna use the puppet tool. And this is a really cool technique. Let's go ahead and just control shift D and split that here because we don't need it past this point. So we'll delete that start from here and we're going to use our puppet tool so on our toolbar it's this little last one puppet position tool we're just going to select each of the knuckles so we'll forget the th we'll forget the thumb for now let's just link this first so knuckle 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 just like that and if we scroll down here you can see our puppet tool let's open that up in our effects open up mesh one open up deform and you're gonna see each of our puppet pins, which we can now select and manipulate. So to link this to the tracking info, we're gonna use a little expression and that's gonna be in the description. So just copy and paste that into your expression editor whenever we go ahead and set it up. Let's start with our pointer finger. This is puppet pin one. If you want, you could even rename this to pointer. It's up to you if you wanna stay organized like that. Open up pointer finger. And we're going to change the pin type to advanced. Now what we're going to do is at our starting position here, again, we're going to link. So we're going to hold down alt and we're going to click on position. It's going to turn red and now we can paste in our little expression. So again, go to the description, copy the expression and we're going to control V to paste it over what's here. Then all you need to do is just scroll up with your mouse wheel. And you'll see where it says this comp layer and it's going to have these little quotations it should say null object just select in that quotations and select whichever null corresponds to where you want to track so mine was pointer finger so i'm going to select left pointer and just click away now as i move here you're going to see that this entire finger is going to be bending with the tracking info that i created so that's an easy way to link it to any of the track markers that you used and that way you don't have to manually use the puppet tool to kind of create this fake movement that's not going to match up perfectly. You can have this perfectly match onto these markers that you drew on whatever part you want and have it as easy as that. If you wanted to, you could even use this technique on the skull face. I haven't experimented with that because I just did a tiny bit of rotation and it was pretty easy to do. But if you wanted to, if you were having some issues with the skull, you can even just put little puppet points, say I put one on the skull here, here, kind of corresponding with with the facial points and then you just link that all together so this is a great technique it's very powerful and we're going to go ahead and do this to the rest of the fingers here so let's show you one more time let's go to puppet pin 2 this is going to be our middle finger and that up change it to advanced alt click the position control v to paste in the expression and then scrolling up you just change this comp layer to whatever this is so this is left 
middle and there you go now our middle finger is linked to that knuckle so we have the knuckle linked up and let's keep going through puppet pin three this is our ring you get an error even though you did it sometimes you'll just need to get rid of that little space and then it'll work there we go so we have all of the knuckles completely linked up again i think that's a super useful tool that you can do see this still isn't perfectly linked up there's still a lot of issues here what you may be thinking is oh i can just take my puppet tool i can just plop some more pins here and i could just change the positioning like this well what you're going to notice is these aren't going to look that good with motion so as you see it kind of just turns into like jelly so your only option for what to do and not get this crazy kind of like jelly motion because these are reacting to these pins is you can either a repeat the steps where i made the motion you can just control d all your little nulls left pointer two left middle two and you can make a new tracking info for different dots so i can make more nulls i could track them to these dots i can make more nulls i could track them to these dots if i wanted to be completely perfect with each of the bending of the joints and then link them all using the way that i showed you to save time what you also could do let's go back in here let's go ahead and just make some new puppet pins again that like that and this time Let's open up our mesh here. So open up our mesh. These are the ones that aren't named are the new ones. So you select it, you open it up, change your pin type to bend and not position. So if you change it to bend, it's not gonna be as crazy. It's gonna stay stiff like that. And then you can still kind of grab it and you could scale it down. If you want to, you could bend it to have it fit. And that way that part is just gonna be stiff. Again, it's just gonna stay straight. It's only gonna be following the movement of the knuckle. So that's a little trick to save you some time, not have to go through with insane amounts of track nulls. But again, if you wanted to, you could go in and track null all of it. So let's do that for all of these. We're gonna scale them down and we're gonna bend them a bit. There you go. We now have this tracked over top of our hand. We save some time just by placing the other parts of the finger on bend and we'll compensate for that with the blending. We're gonna hide this and not make it look as stiff. You can also, of course, do the same with the wrist. So if you look at my original comp, where here, as you can see, I started to blend everything together. But if we grab the skeleton hand and we look at our puppet, you'll see that I also did a little track on my wrist. I just did a little motion track like how it did on my points. And I linked another position onto my wrist. Also placed another bend just to affect it. So use those techniques. I think it's a powerful underutilized thing that's, that exists within After Effects. Let's go ahead and just composite and blend it in like we did with the skull. So again, what you can do is change your blending mode. Maybe you want it on screen. Maybe you want it on multiply. You wanna see what I did to my original skeleton hand to get this look. Here is what I added. Um, again, the exact same thing that I added onto my skull. All right guys, so the last thing I wanna leave you with the After Effects portion of this tutorial, I think I gave you the, mo the main bread and butter of the tool set needed to be able to pull off something like this. We talked about the tracking, creating the look with the invert, um, compositing, to remove the little dots and make them look normal. You guys can just take a little chunk out of your original footage. So control D to duplicate. I'm going to rename this to track cover up. All you need to do here is grab your pen tool and let's take a little chunk of my hand here that doesn't have a marker. I'll draw a little circle here. Now I can just click V to bring up my normal pointer. You can just click here, drag it over the point and you'll see how we have this rough edge. Click M on that layer to bring up your mask, and then just feather. If you're showing a bit, take your mask expansion and adjust. You may also need to do a tiny bit of color correction. So we'll go to effects and presets, um, <clears throat> look up curves, and as you see, I can just kind of match any skin tones if I need to. I already created the tracking info on the pointer finger, on my middle finger for here. So I can just go to where it says parent and link on this layer and just set it to left middle. And you'll see the layer will now follow with the track. You can go in and just make any adjustments you need. So pretty simple to remove something like that and then using the tracking info to get it to follow the motion of the hand. All right guys, so that wraps up the After Effects portion. Those techniques are very useful and they're not too complicated. They're not too in depth. We're just using some simple tracking. So make sure you guys are utilizing that, not just for creating this skeleton look, but for any other project where you might wanna track something on your face, your hand. There's so many applications that this can be used for. 
Now let's go into Cinema 4D and let's show you how we can create some X-ray renders which you can use with your footage to kind of see through anything you want. We'll also talk about tracking within Cinema 4D in case you want to do all, in case you want to do that full body skeleton rig like they probably did. Let's hop in now and see what we can do. All right guys, so here we are in Cinema 4D Octane. I'm going to show you how you can create some X-ray shaders which is going to be useful for if you want to add that X-ray effect to any props in your scene. And of course, if you want, you can apply these X-ray effects if you are doing the 3d workflow you're going to want to go to file merge objects to bring in some 3d model this is from my 3d starter pack from my website but of course you can find a lot of stuff for free using the same method i showed you earlier i'm going to bring in this um, 3d face i'm also going to bring in this 3d skull but i've already brought those in as you can see so i've already aligned these two just so that the skull is inside the head and now we're going to go ahead and make that x-ray shader so the way i like to do it is by using a cinema 4d octane material and of course like i said if you want you can use blender do this for free there's a bunch of x-ray shader tutorials out there for whatever 3d software you are using for me i go to create shader c4d octane material i'm going to go ahead and apply this material to the face as well as the skull which is this object here double click on the material to start editing it i'm also going to go to my octane tab here and just open up the live viewer window so i can see this real-time um, render preview of what this is going to look like. And this is really easy. All you need to do at this point is just go to the left side here, all these little channels, go over to the opacity channel, click this little arrow drop down. You're going to go to Cinema 4D Octane here, and you're going to load in a fall off map. And as you see, it's going to automatically apply this x-ray looking effect onto this, which is pretty cool. And if you want to see this a little bit better, the best way to make this look good is by using lighting. So on my live viewer, I'm going to go to objects. I'm going to go to HDRI environment just to turn everything black. And then I'm going to go over to objects load in a light and I'm just going to bring in some octane area lights. If you run into any errors here where it kind of cancels out, just make sure you delete that may be below any of this. Go ahead and re-render that so you can start seeing what this is going to look like. And let's move the lighting over here just so we can see that. And there you can see a nice glowing x-ray render. I think I may even tilt the skull up a little bit. If you want to change the colors of this, you can always go to the light settings. So you just select the little light tag in your object menu for your light. And you can either just use temperature, you see cold, if you want more bluish, you can make it red, orange, or if you want where it says distribution here, you click this arrow and you can click color. And then you can just select any color that you may want to put in here just using this color wheel. And as you can see, pretty cool. I would experiment with some different lighting setups just to see if you can get some different looks. But that is the overall basics on how you can customize this. You guys could also go to objects, create an octane camera, and then clicking on your camera tag here. If we just go over to camera imager and enable that, you can also turn on post processing. You guys can add a bit of glow if you want. You guys can change any you guys can change different LUTs, different exposures for this. So that's how you can create those x-ray effects and you have your 3D software at your disposal to create a wide range of different things. Now that you know how to create these different x-ray effects in 3D, let's show you how you can use motion tracking within Cinema 4D so that you may have a similar workflow that we did with After Effects, but you have the but you have a wider range of tools at your disposal using this 3D software or any 3D software. All right guys, so to motion track our footage, it's pretty easy within Cinema 4D. You just go up to the motion tracker tab and you're going to go to motion tracker tracker. Now in your object menu, select this and you're going to see this footage settings under the footage tab. Click these three dots to load in your footage. So here is the clip that I was using for this. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and you'll see that there's a lot of footage here. We want to trim this down to the part that we like. So I'm going to trim it to around here. So from the 360 frame mark to around the 418 frame mark. So in the bottom right here, you're going to see frame start. Let's start that at around 364. So I'll set it to three, six, four, and then I want it to stop around. So we'll put that to frame stop 418. Let's do the same on the timeline. So we're only seeing that selected area. So on the far left here, we're gonna set that to three, six, four. On the far right here, we're gonna set that to 418. Now, as we scroll through here, we've only selected the targeted area that we would like to track. So we're ready to start going. Let's click on the motion tracker again. And what we're going to do here, you'll see this resampling. This is basically your quality. We're going to want to crank that up so that it's sharp. It's a sharper image, which is going to be easier when it comes to um, finding those track points. So once you have done that, we can click over to 2D tracking, this tab right here, and we can go ahead and click manual tracking. This is auto tracking if you want to create kind of like a 
3D camera solve, like an After Effects. We're gonna go to manual tracking and we're gonna go ahead and start adding these in. So you'll see I have all these dots on my face. If I hold down control on my keyboard, I can just click on each of those dots and make sure you're not using the selector tool or it won't work. So I'll go to this movement tool, hold down control, click. And you'll see that it creates this little marker and I can resize this if I wanted to, I can make this a smaller little area here. And I'm just gonna add these onto all of the little track markers, which I've added to my face. I'm gonna do the head by itself and then I'm gonna do the hands separately. And I recommend you do this as well, just so things don't get confusing. So we'll start with the face here. We're gonna start at our beginning position click on our motion tracker, and you'll see now you have each of these little track points in this little user track area. You can go ahead and just shift click to select all of them and just click this manual track button and it's gonna do the work for you and start to track the motion. So now if we play through here, you're gonna see these little lines which are replicating the motion um, that these trackers are taking place. So as you can see, we got a pretty good result out of here. This one kind of, this one kind of throws off for a second because my hand goes in front of it, but that's fine. So what you guys are going to need to do is make sure that you're tracking at least 8 to 12 markers. And this is very important because if you have under that, it's not going to let you take the next step. The button that you have to click next is going to be grayed out. So I'm just going to add a t so I'm just going to add a few more trackers. I'm going to click off here and let's go ahead and maybe just track the eyes. So I'll click like here, I'll track the nose, and then I'll hold control, select those new ones that I made, and then again, manual track them once more. That should be good for us for now. We could always go back and add another one if we need to. So holding down shift, I'm gonna select all of these. If you have any leftovers, just hold down control and just click those two. So you're selecting all of your user track. So you're selecting all of your track marks. We're gonna go back up to the motion tracker tab in the top left and I'm gonna click object tracker. Once you have your object tracker up, we're gonna go and where it says assign selected, click that and it's gonna paste all of those track markers into the assigned tracks part. Next you go to reconstruction and this is gonna be grayed out if you don't have enough track marks. So make sure you have at least eight track marks for this to actually be showing up. Click this button and the computer is gonna go ahead and run the 3D solve. You'll see in the bottom left, it's running perfectly fine. And this was pretty quick. So you'll see if we drag here, we now have these keyframes on the timeline. So now what we need to do is we need to take this object tracker and we need to connect it to a null object. Kind of like how we do with After Effects where we paste all of the motion keyframes into a null. So to do that, just click and hold on this little square object and create a null. And now as you see when I created the null and we're clicked and we're clicked off the object tracker, you're gonna see all of these different colors on the trackers. So if we open up the object tracker object here and you open up user features, you're gonna see some of these are green, some of them are red, some of them are kind of like purple. Green means that it's a good track, red means that it's a poor track. So you can use that as a little reference. Either way, let's connect the null to the object tracker. I'm just gonna click and drag down. So what we need to do now is I'm just going to select the null. I'm gonna go up to my tags tab in the top right here. I'm gonna go over to character tags and I'm going to create a constraint. So select that constraint. So clicking on this constraint tag here, what we need to do is we want to constrain the position scale and rotation. So select that and you now have this little tab here. We can go here and you see this target. So the target of this is going to be our user features, which is a child of the object tracker. And we're gonna select this user features and drag this into the target layer. So let me bring that up again, click on the constraint, the PSR tag, click, drag that into target. So now make sure you're just in the model mode, make sure you're not on the selector tool and you're just on a move tool. Go ahead and click on the null in your object bin here. And if we drag, you're gonna see that the null is following the movements that we tracked on my face, as you can see. So now we can bring in any object and we can link it to that null, which is containing our track info. So for example, I'll click and we'll just make a cube. Just take this cube and make sure it's a child of the null. So pointing down arrow, double click to reset it, select it, shift C, PSR, reset position scale rotation. Double click that, and if we click away, there you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take the Z axis of this cube, but you'll see it's following the motion of my face. This cube is kind of just our reference. Let's go ahead and file merge objects, and let's bring in an actual skull model. So I'll go to overlays and elements, and I have my 3D starter pack here. So we're gonna go to objects here. Here's my skull, and we'll do the same exact thing. Take this mesh, which I'm going to rename to skull. Click and drag it so it's a child of my null here. And we'll turn the cube off. And again, select the skull, shift C, 
type PSR, reset your position scale rotation. And there you go, just a few minor adjustments here. And you're basically working in the exact same setup as um, After Effects, where we had the After Effects tracked over our face. And now you can make those tiny adjustments with the rotation. You can, you can create some different materials to lower the opacity to line things up better. Once you're done, if depending on what renderer you're using, if you're using Cinema 4D Octane, you can change your settings. But you just click this little render settings button here. Make sure, change your renderer to whatever you're, you are using. So standard, turn on the alpha channel and then turn off all the backgrounds and then just render out the pieces that you need and bring them back into After Effects and then repeat the steps that we showed you earlier in the tutorial in the tutorial to composite it all. I hope you guys did enjoy this. I hope that it taught you guys a lot of useful stuff. We're starting to bring more 3D in, but at the same time, we're sticking close to those roots and we're still trying to bring you guys the newest tips and tricks in After Effects, Adobe Premiere, anything that can help you guys create the things that you want to create. If you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like on it. It helps a huge amount. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Turn on that bell notification to never miss a tutorial. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.